right, we're live. And I'm just gonna give this <clears throat> a couple of uh, moments to kind of tune in because there's a little bit of a delay when I go live. Um, and let me shut off some of the video. Oh, or web links on here so you guys are not hearing it continuously ding um but happy canadian thanksgiving guys it is thanksgiving in canada i know it might be very weird for um our friends from the states <clears throat> hi leia thank you <clears throat> okay yes yeah, so i'm keeping it very simple this sunday because i've got um Thanksgiving dinner over at families and so I just wanted to make sure that we have our time together really nicely and sort of me taking time to deck out and all of that plus I want to really get in a workout before I consume all those calories today um, but yeah just while you guys are still trickling in just really quickly if you guys have been following me on Instagram or on social media I've been doing these watercolor events and so the weekend before we had the event the watercolor experience at uh, a winery in niagara on the lake and then yesterday we had a watercolor experience at a flower farm in campbell campbellville ontario stunning you should rush over and check out my stories because it was such a fabulous experience and um i honestly wish i could have an event and just kind of have all of you guys join in because it was such a spectacular experience in each of these different venues but yesterday was by far i think like the most enjoyable for me because a i got to pick my own flowers so we got a little mason jar and we got scissors and we got to go and pick our own flowers and then uh we had our painting session in this stunning barn and the barn is pretty much their shop where they sell teas and they sell jams and a whole bunch of other things because they're a farm right and they have this lavender tea guys that apparently you you have it with milk and honey and it is out of this world i have to try that but spectacular i did get to try the lavender shortbread cookie which was amazing so for those of you farm nature enthusiasts fanatics Definitely check out Lachlan Botanicals. They are so amazing. You guys are rolling in. Hi, Katerina, Janelle, Rihanna. Thank you so much. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to uh, keep this too long. Let's just get started. I want to get into, I'm so inspired for the farm yesterday that I want to get into um, a nice, pretty floral composition <clears throat> with a uh, pumpkin. So the some of you have probably seen me post an image of it. That's something I did not do a tutorial for. So this is going to be that video where we get to do that together and learn. Um, but in the description of this video, I have put several links of the elements we're going to be using to put this composition together. So if you want to focus a little bit more on those and if I rush too fast for you, please check those. Um, videos out so i've got a loose pumpkin video i've got lavender but we're gonna do the lavender a little more fine lined in this video i've got roses so you can do your roses on there or you can do peonies whatever you want to do and uh asters i definitely want to try asters because we did that last week uh or week before last so we're going to be doing all of that so right away i'm going to get into this video let me switch over so you can see my um so you can see my table all right okay so here's what we have i'm gonna move this aside um so for brushes i have i'm gonna be using or keeping uh handy my da vinci number one the filbert number six by princeton uh, silver black velvet number four and number eight. So these are like my tried and true, at least these three. We're going to add the filbert for the asters. So if you, for those of you who've done the asters video, we're using the filbert. And yeah, the rest will be for the pumpkin and the other bigger florals. 
So putting that aside, I've got paper towel handy. I've got two little cups of water. And then I, for colors, I am using my St. Petersburg White Knights, my set of 36, I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through which colors we're using. And if I feel like it, I am, I might just use the KMS Metallics. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with her on YouTube, sorry, not YouTube, on uh, Instagram, but love, 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 love her, um, her potent metallics. Like they're so potent, it's almost like, like it's got the watercolor effect, but it's almost like a gouache-ish kind of consistency or thickness. So love it. So it's a little bit, it's like, it's different from the Paul Rubens, which I also love, which is very translucent and light and faint. Okay, getting right into it. So, oh, and for paper, I've got Canson watercolor paper, XL, not the 100% uh, cotton one. All right, so we are going to start. <clears throat> hi, Didi. Hi, Vitago from Peru. Wow. Hi, Katie from France. Welcome, guys. Okay, so we're going to start off by doing the florals first. And then we are going to end off with doing the um, the pumpkin at the bottom. So I'm going to start off by uh, doing our bigger florals, so our main centerpieces. And then we're going to build off with the smaller florals. And then we'll do the lavender. So our main floral is going to be, we'll, we're going to go with roses today. Uh, I'm going to keep that simple. So we're going to do roses. We're going to do the asters for the fill, uh, the secondary florals. And then for the little tiny fillers, we'll do the lavender. And then finally our pumpkin. And obviously the leaves, but yeah. Okay, so for roses, again, there's enough there. I've done several roses videos, but um, oh, I just realized I don't have a palette. Where's my palette? Okay, my palette's kind of messy, but... I'm just going to make it work, but I will tell you what colors I'm using. So as I was saying, for roses, if you want more in-depth study on roses, I've got tons of videos, so check it out. But we're going to start off by using, um, I'm going to use my Quinn Lilac for the rose. The Quinn Lilac mixed in with a little bit of um, Carmen. Yeah, let's do that. So a little bit of Carmen. And the Quinn Lilac, that's going to be our roses for today. So I'm going to get some of my Quinn Lilac, which is right here. And I'm going to start this off by using my number four for the centers. And the centers are going to be our cute little sea strokes, my famous sea strokes, or comma strokes, or quotation marks, whatever you want to call it. So I'm getting a good enough consistency here where there's more color, lesser water, so it can be nice and bright on the sheet. Using my number four, I'm gonna start adding little C strokes on the sheet here. So make sure you guys can see me, yep. So I'll start some over here. So using tiny little, just the tip of my brush, I'm creating these little C strokes. One here, one is a hook above, then the next layer I'm doing slightly thicker dipping the tip of my brush in water and I'm going to do another stroke over on this end. Again, I'm kind of pressing down and as I go along, I'm going to make this section section a little thicker than the other two. And then another one here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my Da Vinci and I'm going to get some of that Carmen that I promised you guys. And I'm mixing the consistency to get it to be more watery. And now I'm going to do the same strokes, slightly touching the inner strokes a bit, and encompassing this little rose that we've done. And you can see the reason I'm touching it is so that I can get a nice flow of color. And I'm going to kind of go inside and fiddle a little bit with the strokes on the inside, trying to push out some of that Quinn Lilac. And then just dipping the brush, uh, the tip of my brush in water again. I'm just going to do a couple of looser strokes on the outside. 
because I want it to be light to dark. Okay. Now I'm going to go back, actually before I go back in with that, I'm just going to go use the same mop and add, go over the strokes that I've done on the inside because I don't want it to be as uh, rigid looking. I want it to be a little more flowy like the rest of the flower. And then I'm going to go back in with the number four and we're going to add in a couple of strokes here and there around the rows to kind of really have this color also mix in with what we've just done. So just like that. I've got a little bit of pooling in here, so I'm just dabbing my brush on my paper towel and I'm just going to <clears throat> take away <clears throat> Take away some of the color and just adding a couple of extra strokes so that it looks like the rose is nice and full. And there we have a cute little rose. Okay, so now what I want to do is while this is still like a nice enough damp consistency, I'm going to get, use the number four without washing it off, I'm going to get some of the Carmen and I want to try adding a couple of Carmen strokes in here. just to kind of get a nice flare of color. Let's just see how that works out for us. And I'm just going to add it at the bottom more than the top. And then I'm going to go back and get some of the Quinn Lilac again, but directly from the little paper, sorry, from the little color cake. And I just want to add more strokes in the center just to kind of intensify center some more give it more layers almost and then I'll leave that as is so that's good we've got our one rose let's do another one pretty much the same technique um, yeah let's do Let's actually do a small little one happening over here, just kind of maybe peeking out so it looks like a tinier rose. <clears throat> so for that, I think I'm going to use the Carmen first. I'm going to reverse the colors a little bit, so I'm not washing off anything from my number four. I'm going to get a little bit of Carmen. And actually what I will also do before I do that is washing off most of the color from my brush. I'm just going to dampen this area, but I'm doing the strokes as if it's like a little flower on the side taking up most of the water from my brush. I'm just kind of adding a couple of little strokes around here as if the flower were facing that way. And now that I have that dampness, if you feel like there's too much water pooling, just take your paper towel and just dab the extra water away. And that should help when we go in with this brush and add some nice darker hues. So I'm just going to lightly dab because I don't want it to be completely uh, dry. I want some water so I can get that effect, the blending effect. And uh, now getting some of the Carmen. I'm going to go ahead and add a center at the top here because it's facing upward more. And I'm just going to add a couple of little strokes just like that. And you can see it's giving me that nice cauliflower type effect. I want that. I'm taking off most of the color from my brush and I'm just going to take some <clears throat> some of the Carmen on it and I'm just going to add a couple of strokes around here.
Maybe taking off a little more water because I want this to kind of flow a little bit more. I don't want to overdo the top because it is kind of facing upwards. So you got to see more of the petals down as opposed to the top. And I'm going to get a little more of the carmine just on the tip of my brush and just add some darker strokes just here. And then just kind of leave it, I think. Because I want that to be like a faded kind of rose. Um, and at this point, you know what? Because it's still kind of damp and we've got some nice color happening, I'm going to take some of my chromium oxide green and just mixing it on here onto my palette. You can see. I'm going to get some of that chromium oxide. I love this color. The greens and I'm just going to add a couple of strokes in here just to add some greenery before we even go anywhere else with the composition because I wanted to get a little bit of blending with that purpley pink before anything else happens as I mentioned. If it pulls up like that and it doesn't give you a nice enough blend just take your paper towel and you can dab away dab some of it away, not all of it, because you do want that effect, it's pretty. And if you, again, if you feel like water is pooling on your brush, take your paper towel and dab away. And I'm just adding these light strokes this way so it looks like some of them are kind of fading off. And that's it, so that's it for that. We'll do one more rose here. And I know I said I wanted to do more Carmen for this, but it still looks like there's more Quinn in the center than Carmen. So we're going to do, um, I'm going to get more Carmen this time. Or try to at least. Let's see how it works. Okay, so now that I've got some of that Carmen on my number four, I'm going to add, we're going to redo or do another rose, not redo because it's already done. And I'm going to start by doing the little comma strokes here. Yep, that's more of a Carmen. Dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm enhancing and making the second layer slightly thicker. Be mindful of the white space I'm leaving. I want to leave white space. Now I'm going to go in and take my mop brush Using the tip of it, I'm just going to get a little bit of the Quinn Lilac, dipping the tip of it in water again, and I'm going to start painting the same strokes again, but using the Quinn Lilac and just around this area. Maybe mixing some of that Carmen with the Quinn so that it transitions better. There we go. Really liking that blend. So you can see white space is so key in terms of making your painting look loose and fluffy and pretty. So I'm going to go back in with the number four and just add a couple of strokes in the edges and such. Maybe even enhance some of the water that I've laid down here. I'm washing off most of it from my, my mop. And I'm just going to add a couple more strokes. Just wet the area really. So that when I go in with my number four, I'm getting a nicer blend. Maybe mix that in with the Quinn Lilac some more. Add a couple more strokes here and there. And finally, what I want to do is deepen the center. So I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of the violet. I'm mixing that in with the Carmen, and that's happening right here. I want a 
reddish kind of purple like a wine color almost and I'm just enhancing the center adding some of that color on the outskirts as well to kind of really tie it in a bit and then finally just like fading off with a couple of strokes on the outer end Now these strokes here, I want this to be a lot looser, so I'm just going in with like water and just trying to fade it off. Okay, perfect. I like this. So now we're going to move on and get some, um, some leaves happening in here. So using the number eight, I'm going to get some off my chromium just like previous and I'm just going to add a couple of strokes oh you know what uh, I do have a leaf video as well for those of you who are not too awesome with leaves I should add that to the description as well completely forgot that leaves are involved here too guys okay so I don't want to do too much green just here and there a little bit and then we will enhance and do some more right after we finished our asters and other bits asters and the um, the lavender so I've got some here some here um, just gonna get some just peeking a little bit here maybe okay I don't want to do too much at the bottom because we will be doing our our pumpkin so I'll just do a light amount so that when we do our pumpkin it doesn't kind of overlay too much because I think we'll do our darkest leaves below here so that after we do the pumpkin so that it kind of doesn't interfere with anything pumpkin related i'm just adding a little bit of green strokes in here to kind of make it look like it's a bunch of florals together okay so we're done this and so the next thing we gotta do is add some some aster so let's add some of those cute little asters let's get you know what I am going to use my pink champagne uh, by KMS metallics for the asters let's just see how that looks so if you've watched the asters video we got to start off with the center first so I'm washing off my number four and we're going to use a combination of um, a combination of the cadmium medium lemon which I have on here already and then we're going to use a little bit of the titan red or golden deep to kind of just add a little bit of orange to it or you could just leave it with the lemon really like you don't have to go two tone for every single thing um, let's just try it okay so I'm going to do a couple of asters around Let's do some over here, just a little bit at the top. Not so much, not very close to the roses. Um, and maybe some at the bottom too, you know? Okay, so uh, we'll do a little dome shape first. And I'm just kind of creating this dome shape by dabbing along on my paper. So here's my little dome shape. And I'm kind of trying to leave white space in in there in between this is the center of the aster and just adding a little bit of like tiny little dots at the top making it loose looking and then using the tip of this brush i'm going to get a little bit of the 
Titan Red, just on the tip of this brush. And I know it's already kind of pooling a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some Titan Red to like the bottom of this. And dabbing off some water, I'm just gonna add a little bit more just at the top maybe. Okay, and that's that. Um, then using the Filbert, Instant Filbert, y'all. Gonna get some of that pink champagne. And let's see how this works out. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna zoom in. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys and you can see it better. I'm zoomed in. Yes, I am zoomed in. Perfect. And you can see clearly, yes, you can. Fabulous. Um, okay, so now for these petals, I'm going to be drawing the petals or painting the petals in from the outside in. So here we go. There's one. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, getting more of that nice pink champagne by KMS. I'm adding another stroke. Dipping the tip again, getting more. I'm just going to kind of go along and add these cute little petals all along. Now, I'm a little more controlled with this because I'm trying to make this a smaller floral compared to the roses. But I'm really loving that bleed happening in there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that bleed is so pretty from the center going into the um, into our metallic here. Love it. Okay, so we've got one. I'm going to do, I think I'll do two more. Uh, I think one can be a bud and maybe one flower just upward or something like that and maybe one down. Let's just see. Okay, let me see where the inspiration takes me. Okay, getting more of the yellow from right here. I'm gonna do another one. Let's do it. I think I'll make the bud on this direction here and the third the second flower here and then one down here. So then we've got three different locations. Okay, so here's one more. You guys can see this, right? So again, I'm just kind of dabbing away and creating my dome. I'm gonna make all these kind of facing sideways and then getting a little bit of that uh, Titan Red, dabbing away at the bottom. A little bit at the top, all around, well not all around, just at the bottom and a little bit at the top. And then getting a little bit more of that lemon, because I really like that cadmium medium lemon. Just adding some more in the mix there. Love how that dried off. Okay, so back to my filbert. I am going to get some pink champagne again. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Creating my petals from the outside in. Slightly or lightly touching the center of my flower. Just so I can get a little bit of a bleed into it, make it pretty and loose looking. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, getting a little bit more of that metallic. I'm going to continue on. Like if some of the strokes or the petals are slightly lighter, I don't mind that. We, we are trying to go less detail on the secondary elements that aren't the main factor. And I think the roses are the main Okay, so now that I have some color on this already, I'm just going to go ahead and create a tiny little uh, 
I'm not here this way. Um, bud at the top over here. And so I'm literally just creating like a dome shape kind of shape. Yeah, it's pretty much the shape. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to do another one, another bud sort of peeking over here on this side. Maybe I'll, I'll even make it two buds, like one here. And then like one more at the top maybe, or no, just one at the bottom this way, yeah. And because it's still damp, I'm just gonna take my number four and get some, some of my olive green. So I've got some olive green mixing it onto my palette really quickly. And I'm going to use the olive green to create the extension for this. Okay, so I'm going to do some over here on this side too. And it's going downwards towards the roses. Same over here. And then some over. It's kind of hidden. But yeah. Make it work, guys. Somehow make it work, yeah. So I love how this color is different from the other green and it kind of really makes them pop just a tiny bit. And while I have this color, I'm just gonna use the number four to create a couple of like wispy leaves. Um, but I don't wanna do too many because I still have to do other elements. So I'm just going to use uh, create these wherever I see fit. I feel like it needs it, so I'll, I'll add it there. If I don't feel like it needs it, it's not going to be there, obviously. I'm doing an extension this way. In fact, I am going to add a add one kind of just going this way almost like a grassy element to it delicate element yeah that's good and I think I'll do one, I think that's enough here, yeah. Just adding a couple here to kind of also fluff this area up and make it look full more. Yeah, and I think when I do my other aster here, I'll probably add one there too. So yeah, let's do that. Let's move on to that and then we can get on. Okay, so back to the Cadmium Medium Lemon some more from my cake mixing it on here we're gonna create um, so this aster will be facing downward so the dome will be downward here let me pull up the sheet so you guys can see and I just want to make sure you're able to see this area yes you are perfect Okay, so this is facing downward. <clears throat> so this dome is downward facing. And then I'm getting some of my Titan Red. 
I'm going to add some of that in the corners at the very bottom and then a little bit at the top and I'm just kind of dotting it off <clears throat> the edge. Okay, now back to the filbert, getting some water on the tip of my brush, getting some of my pink champagne. And you know what, for these, I am going to flip my sheet because my hand can't move quite effectively if I do it this way. So I'm flipping my sheet over and I'm going to have to be very controlled with how I do this because there's a leaf right there. Um, yeah, okay. So you guys can see, right? Yeah, you can see it. So I'm just gonna try and be more controlled in this area because I don't want things overlapping too much. And it's fine if these petals are a lot lighter or looser. Yeah, lighter in color and not as potent uh, because it's almost like it's almost like at the edge, so it's not really a main focus. So I like the fact that some of these are some of these petals on here are almost like washed out. So it's like a hint. I mean, it's like an assumed hint, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Back to our our little uh, our olive green, just so we can add a little bit of olive green here. I'm getting some olive green on here, and then I'm just gonna add. What can I add? I'll just add a. a strand like a grassy strand on here oh, hold on I wonder if you guys can see probably couldn't see you can see my grassy strand now right so all I did was just added a strand on this side and added that little piece of grass at the bottom well leafy grass or whatever you want to call it okay this one's a little bit darker but that's okay some can be darker and that's what makes the painting complete when you have like different vibrations of color all over the place so it is fine so if I have some dark ones here, I'm just going to add a couple over here just to kind of tie it in together. And then maybe even some at the, this area here. Kind of falling outward. Okay. Okay, so this is good. Uh, now we can move on to doing some of our lavender. And now for lavender, because we've got a lot of purple and lilac sort of happening here, what I want to do is use a combination of um, a combination of violet. Violet, cobalt, yeah, I think violet and cobalt. I was thinking about blue, but I think violet and cobalt is better. So I'm going to get some of my violet, and I am going to add it 
onto this area here because it's got some of that lilac already. I might even, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going to mix it in with some of the lilac as well just to give it a different variation. There we go. I like this purple, this purple right here. And then we can use the darker one to kind of highlight certain areas, okay? All right, so we got that, and then I'm getting some of my cobalt. So we did some of this yesterday at the farm, and it was kind of really cool to explore different ways that you can get these pretty lavender. Love how that blue looks as well. So I'm hoping for a nice blend. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use my number eight washed out. And I'm going to get a little bit of the, the blue that I've kind of done here on the tip of the brush, making sure I don't have too much water. So I'm just kind of touching my brush onto paper towel. And I'm going to create yeah, I'm going to create a couple of strands here and then some poking out here, I think. Yeah, let's do that. I just want to make sure everything is dried up properly. And I think for this, yeah, you can see it well. So I'm going to create a couple of random little strokes kind of in a linear, like in a line, but like off to the side because I want it to kind of look like it's to the side. So I'm going to start that over here. So here's one, here's two, here's three, one in the center, one here. And then what I'm going to do is wash off most of the stuff from this brush. So I've washed off the color and now with just water, I'm going in and I'm doing the exact same kind of motion or strokes. All around. And essentially what this is doing is I'm pulling color from my initial set of strokes that I laid down here. And then I'm going to go in with this brush and I'm just going to add, okay, this is the brush I was supposed to use to add water, but uh, you know what, we'll keep the number four for, keep the number four for a, um, for the green and I'm going to get a little bit of that perp, uh, the dark purple and I'm going to add that in here. Just adding a couple of little dots here and there. Kind of really trying to make this lavender cute and delicate but then also kind of blending it with some of the purple and the blue that we have love it okay now we're going to go for the green so for the green i'm going to use a mixture of the chromium oxide and the um and the olive green and using my number four i am just going to create my my stem and I'm also going to add a little bit of green at the top of the stem as well. Now you can add some green on the inside because it does have a little bit of green here and there. I'll leave that up to you guys. It's totally up to you but there we've got lavender and now we'll do this a couple more times before we move on to the pumpkin. Okay. I just want to make sure you guys are still able to see properly. Okay, so moving on, we are doing our... We're going to start off with the blue this time. So let's get some of that cobalt in here. And I'll do one over here. So adding some here, randomly here and there. And then going in with the same brush washing off most of the color just kind of taking some water and just adding 
couple of similar strokes around here, dampening the area, leaving white space, making sure you're not kind of covering up the whole area, otherwise it'll be one big blob. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go back and get some of that darker purple using the tip of my brush. And I'm just gonna add same kind of strands here and there. In between. And we've got lavender. Okay, getting more of the green now with the number four. I'm going to add my green at the very top of this and also in between a little bit, just in like two areas. And the, the rest of it is hiding behind the rose, so we're good. Um, okay, so we've got two there. I'm going to actually use some of the green to make this, to make like a little bit of a lavender kind of leaf. Yeah, well just another kind of leaf to kind of fluff these guys up a bit more these leaves might be a little bit too high because i think a lot of them are more at the bottom but you know what guys no one's really looking for realism over here that's why it's called loose watercolor <laughs> we go with the flow and we do what pleases us because we are the artist here right quote unquote we do this for the joy it brings us nothing else all right, okay, so I've washed off my number eight again, and we are going back into doing another one of these. Yeah, so I'm getting some of the purple that I have. This time I'm not really focusing on what kind of shade or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and get whatever purple I have there, and I will create one over here in between these two asters. So same technique as I mentioned before, and I'll make this slightly taller than the rest. So adding some at the top, some at the bottom, kind of going downward. Then dipping the tip of my brush in water, getting a little bit of that blue. Actually, first washing off all the color, making sure I don't have too much water pooling on my brush. I'm just creating these strokes to kind of give it a nice blend before we get some blue. Okay, now I'm going to get some blue. Cobalt blue and add it in there so in previous ones I was using the purple this one I am deliberately using a little bit more of the blue so this piece of lavender looks a little more bluish purple -y in color and finally I'm gonna get some of my green and we're finishing off adding some green at the top I need a little bit more and then a little bit on the insides, fluff it out on the sides as well. And then just kind of extending the stem all the way down. And I'm just going to create tiny versions of the leaves for this lavender. All right, perfect. So we've got two here. We've got one here. I think it's it's fair to kind of add extra loose looking ones just peeking out over here. So very quickly, I'm just going to add a couple of strokes, make them make these ones super fast, not as slow and detailed like I did in the previous ones, just so we can go quicker. Adding some water to this and then finally getting a little bit of that purple, darker purple and adding it in dabs in between. So this is almost like a faded lavender which is pretty, right? 
I like it. I'm gonna add, I don't even need to add much green there. I think that's totally fine. Going back, I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add a couple more of these lavender looking sprigs around here and there. Uh, Cause I like how they're kind of standing there, but I wish I'd given it better flow. Um, I'll do some over, one over on this end here. Yeah, perfect. I'm gonna get some of that green and just add the green in there. So these are a lot lighter as you can see and kind of almost like in the background. So I want some to stand out more, some to kind of be in the background. Okay, so I've got like four here, one here. I think it definitely makes sense to kind of have another one peeking out here. We're doing a lot of lavender way more than I thought we were going to be doing, but that's it's all good. I think it really adds something pretty to the rest of our painting here. Just adding some of the blue now in here. So you're literally just fluctuating between all the colors and kind of just trying to get a nice enough blend so that it all looks, blends nicely and looks good. This is the one thing that's always gets me when I do lavender. Instead of being super thin, I ended up I end up making it a little bit thicker. Oh, just because I keep fluffing the sides. I don't know if anyone else has that issue, but I certainly do. Thankfully, it still looks like something, so I'm not wholly worried about that. adding a couple of sprigs here and there to these guys and just add one there as well and I think that's good yeah okay so I think this is good now we can go in and add let's add our pumpkin and then we are going to finish off by adding the rest of the greens so um, the pumpkin is going to be fairly easy because we are going to be using, it's a loose style, right? So you can either use your number eight silver black velvet or you can use, or you can use your uh, Da Vinci mop number one. And for colors, I'm going to use a combination of the, um, let's see, Titan red, English red, and golden yeah I think those will be good so I'm gonna mix mix it in this area right here so I'll start off with using the golden and then some of the Titan red so I'm getting some of the golden and mixing it on here beautiful orange yellow yellow orange mango color and then I'm gonna get, using the same brush, I'm gonna get some of that Titan Red and mix that just in the corner here. Perfect, I think. And I think what I will do is use both my brushes, my number eight and the number one, to kind of um, draw these pumpkin ridges. So I'm just gonna move this up so you can see me paint. So for, th for this pumpkin, I think I'm just going to make it rounded. I'm not going to be fancy with it at all. Um, yeah, so possibly like that, like up to here, yes. So I'm going to use my Da Vinci number one, and literally all I'm doing is creating a swoosh this way. 
And then I'm going to get a little bit more of the color that I've mixed and I'm going to add another swoosh in here. And feel free to kind of just add in some light strokes so that it looks like you get that nice linear effect happening. And now I'm just getting a little bit of the English red on this brush and I'm just adding some strokes as well in there. Because again, we want these nice ridges, but we want it to kind of fade off and give us different hues of this orange or golden orange or whatever you want to call it. So I'm adding some more, dipping the tip of my brush in water, creating this next ridge. Notice that I'm leaving some white space. I'm going to get some of that uh, English red and just add another stroke here. I'm keeping it very loose, very fun. Nothing too detailed or tough or hard. And again, getting some more of the Titan Red. I'm just going to create another one here. You, you do notice how loose I'm going with my strokes, right? Like I'm literally not even doing too much in terms of detail really getting some water on my brush i'm going to create this next stroke here i love doing pumpkins they're so like relaxing to just such a cheerful color and the brush literally does all the work for you you don't really have to do too much just adding a little bit of that english red in here now I know I said I was going to use two colors, but I'm literally just using, uh, sorry, two brushes. I'm just using the one brush. So here's me using the next one. Since I did tell you I was going to use two brushes. Getting some of that color, mixing it in, dipping it in water. I'm going to paint this next ridge right here. And kind of skirt around floral. I'm just extending this because it kind of turned out to be a little bit longer or bigger. Just getting some water on my brush i'm just going to give this one more swoop to kind of give it a nice finish faint edge and then leaving the rest maybe just kind of like add one more stroke in there because i don't want that much white space in between okay Perfect, we are pretty much done. This looks really nice. Um, if you wanna give it a shadow, you can. What I'm gonna do is wash off my number eight and just add some water here. And very lightly, I'm going to touch some of the orange so it can flow into this area. And then I am going to get some, um, I'll get some burnt umber, which is right here. And I'm just mixing like a 20, 80% of it on the side. And I'm just adding some strokes. Just getting some color, harsh, like darker color on the tip of my brush, and I'm just adding, adding these loose strokes into this area here. If you feel like there's too much water on your brush, just obviously um, dab it away, and then go back and add, add it down. Maybe even add more. 
you know, like really get that nice dark hue mixing in with the orange before it kind of fades off into something else, like a lighter version of it. Why not, right? I think I'll even mix in some of the sepia just to kind of see what that looks like. That's too harsh, so I'm just going to wash off the color and then smoothen it out. Smooth, 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 so that it doesn't look harsh when it's done. Dab excess water if you need to. And add excess color if you need to, to kind of really bring out those shadows. Yeah, I'm adding more sepia, guys. I like the sepia look. Like it's got a nice contrast amongst all the nice dark, um, bright hues that we have happening at the top. It's just nice. Just blend that and I think we're good. Good there. Okay, not going to do any more over there. Let us move on to the last and final bit, which is going to be the, um, the dark leaves. So, again, if you feel like you really like how this looks and you just want to leave it, I would su suggest leaving it. But if you want to add some nice dark leaves, absolutely you can add some. I am definitely going to add some. And for that, I'm going to be using my, um, I'm going to use my number four and I'm going to use the green. It's called green from St. Petersburg. And I'm actually going to mix it in here onto this area where I got some blue. And for this, I'm going to zoom out so you can survey the lay of the land as we paint. zooming in there we go we're zoomed out and now you can see that better okay perfect and I'll switch back so I can see your comments anyways making um okay so now I'm just gonna get some of the green that I was telling you about and we're gonna do some I think the pumpkin has dried up a little bit, so we can do some greens. This area is still damp, so I've got to be mindful of the bottom as I am doing my leaves. So I think I will start off by doing some over on this end at the top, because I want to have some happening here. So I'm going to have a leaf just on this side, looking like it is just peeking out from under the rows. And I'll even get some umber or like some of the brown in the color of my leaves just to kind of give it another variation. And then I can do another one over here. Looking out. So honestly guys, leaves are more... Actually, the whole composition really is, uh, is, is all dependent on what you feel looks good. It's almost like going to a field and picking your own flowers, really. You're just painting it instead. So I would say use or do what you feel is right to you or how you would like your composition to be or look. I am going to go ahead and do what I feel would look nice. And finish this painting off that way. 
So if you want to continue watching or painting along with me, you totally can. But if you feel like you've got the gist of it and you want to go ahead and do it by yourself, you can totally do that as well. There is no obligation to stay longer because I know it is it's already over an hour. Here's the thing with watercolor. You start, you're like, yeah, I'm going to have a short session. And then you just get carried away and you're just painting an hour <laughs> or so later. Okay, I'm going to do, I definitely want darker leaves at the bottom, but I will wait for this to dry properly before venturing there. So we'll, we'll tackle the top some more before going to the bottom, okay? I'm just adding some loosey looking strokes for leaves happening here and there. So maybe even some falling out this way. I like those kind of falling leaves. Just feel like they're so pretty and they give like so much movement and flow to your composition. I'm gonna add them in. I'll definitely add one here below this flower. I think these these areas are dry now, so we can totally tackle them. Add some green strokes happening behind this flower so it looks fuller and there's lots of greenery. And uh, I think now this is dried up, so we'll do over here on this end. overlapping on the pumpkin I can see a little bit of it but it's not too bad I kind of it's for the most part it is a pretty dark green I am adding some of the burnt umber mixed in with the green as well so it's giving me a nice dark hue um, I'll add some of those leaves over here too just gotta make sure that my green is dry at the top Adding those falling tendrils at the bottom. Just really adding a lot of strokes in between as well, because then again, it makes it look fuller and like there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. It really makes the roses and such pop out. Finally ready to add some down here. I'll just get some really nice dark colors happening for this part. I'm 
So I'm adding some of that brown and such for this area here, okay? Just FYI. Plus it also could go off as like shadowy effects at the bottom um, and give it a nice contrast between the light and bright stuff happening all around. So go for that for sure. Just adding. It would also be nice to get some really dry looking strokes um, of dark, dark green happening here. Let me see if I can get one. Although it's quite, uh, my brush is well and damp. But like, you see that dryish kind of look that's happening there. That's what I mean. I'll try getting one over here. Ah, okay. Didn't quite work because I went I went the opposite way. That's the dry look I'm talking about. just really add another variation of the greens well try and add as many variations of greens as you can just kind of go in and add little strokes in and around the florals where you see a little bit of white space don't cover up all the white space but kind of add some strokes that kind of make it look like there's a lot of greenery happening and this way it translates into looking like detail almost and because there's so many different hues of green, oh, I messed up, guys. I put my hand over this area. Oh. Sucks. It's okay. Um, yeah, and because there's different hues of green, it kind of really helps bump up how everything stands out. So you can see how the bottom half really stands out a lot more than the top. And... Uh, yeah, so we'll just add a couple more for the top and then this way it balances out and we've got our pumpkin painting. Okay, so I'm going to leave the bottom for now and we're going to focus a little more and on this area over here. So at this point, because of how dark these leaves are you can almost make it seem like everything else you've painted all the other leaves for instance for with for the um lavender and stuff are more in the background and then these are more foreground kind of bits so like this if i do something like that And then kind of trail off by having like a loosey leaf there and another one here. But I'm essentially really emphasizing the fullness of this and really making the flowers pop. Um, yeah, I would do some... In and around, like on oh, over this area as well, a little bit. You don't want to do it all over because then it's just going to look like too crowded. But try and get a good balance where it balances off with the bottom, and there's there isn't as much white space as you can see between the roses and the asters, for example. So I could just do like one leaf strand, or not strand, one uh, yeah, leaf kind of just coming out that way at the top. It's 
something like that. Same thing with this aster over here, like really make sure that you've got at least some semblance of green happening. So now notice I'm just getting lighter hue, uh, I'm just getting more water on my brush and I'm just adding a couple of strokes here and there in these darker leaves that we just painted. And what is happening is it's making the darker ones more in focus and it's kind of putting the rest of it in the background. So I keep adding more water to my brush as I am continuing. and just fluffing things up really. <laughs> yeah, I know, I did say it was gonna be short, guys. I am so sorry. I did mention, like, when you get started painting, it just kind of goes along, and I'm literally not trying to rush today because I just really feel like I need to do this painting. Who else feels that way? I'm going to add a couple of more strokes and then I promise you, you guys can leave. Although I did say you can leave already if you want to. just want to try and get some green in between the... Oh, got some on top of that aster. It's okay. Okay, I think I'm just trying to survey it by sitting up taller and looking at it. I think we're pretty good. <clears throat> One thing I would do is, besides adding more like green strokes in between the asters, because there's a lot of white space there in my opinion, is in between the roses, these two roses, I just want to add a little bit of green so what i'm actually going to do is add like one of those darker looking leaves just poking out in between and then just break these guys up a little bit okay so just Adding one, I'm gonna add a leaf. I'm trying to see if it should be this flower or this flower. I'll do it in the middle. Oh no, more towards this flower, I mean. I'm gonna add it in this manner, this way. And then actually, yeah, it's technically in both areas. Just add it that way. just want to add one more here okay that's it no more all right, so there we go. We have done our little pumpkin bouquet of flowers. Uh, no more. See, we're done. I think if you wanted to do a little bit of a spray with your brushes, you can do that. I think that would look nice. 
um, but I'll leave that up to you guys you decide how you want to do that maybe even add some like berry bud kind of things if you want to that would also enhance it but again I will leave that up to you guys and uh, yeah let me just make sure you can see the full thing properly before we kind of say goodbye I'm going to zoom out so you can see it better. There we go. So this is our little pumpkin bouquet. Um, let me read comments if anyone had any questions or anything. Uh, hi, Joanne. Glad you were able to make it. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, uh, C. Weaver. Is that Barbara? No, it isn't. Um... Thank you, Yin Mei. Hi, Maria. Hi, Lena. Thanks, Maria. Hi, Zanette. Hey, Jill, you made it. Um, okay, and any questions? Jill, you're funny. If you don't stop, you'll make a huge mess. Don't worry, just watch the video again and try it again. It's gonna be up, right? Uh, yeah, Katarina, I already addressed your comment. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Leah. Maria, I'm glad that you like it. And yeah, glad that you're learning. All right, guys, that's it. I am going to uh, end this off now. I'll take a better picture of this and post it on Instagram. So if you've liked this, guys, Follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel as well. Because you know I do a live paint every other Sunday. And then I also put out weekly watercolor videos. So check those out. If you're learning and interested in uh, watercolor like this. And I think that's it. Have a wonderful day with your families guys. And uh, love you all. We'll chat next week. Bye.